Well, how about that for a big slab of October carp? Welcome to another episode of Adam's Angling Adventures. And this time round, we're at the Good Pals Lake over in France called Lac Luna, and we are being treated to some absolute monsters already. The autumn. There's no better time to be on the bank. With the leaves starting to turn and the lake starting to change, that combined with the crisp cold nights and the light levels reducing, they all make for a great recipe to be on the bank fishing for big carp. With COVID-19 putting many people's travel plans on hold in recent times, it was lovely that the restrictions had finally eased and myself and Gaz could make the short hop over to France to fish the amazing Lac Luna. The lake itself is a picturesque 12 acre gravel pit with crystal clear waters and depths ranging from 5 to 10 feet. It also sits in the shadows of a huge grain silo that's still in use to this day. And the second I saw those towers, I knew I wanted to get myself a cat shot in front of the iconic Lac Luna backdrop. As is often the case with these trips to France, the first day is always a bit of a rush. And if I'm honest, after we had a good walk around with Roy and the sun started to set, it was just a case of getting out in the boat and trying to find a couple of areas we could present rods on for the night. One thing's for sure, we were in no rush. Time stood still and we just took our time preparing rigs, spooling up reels, and all the while the anticipation was building for the session ahead. Although I found a couple of spots, I wasn't overly happy, so it was going to be a case of just leaving them there for the night and then getting back out in the boat in the morning, reinvestigating and finding some better spots for the session ahead. Gaz himself had made the decision not to fish, and to be honest, as I mentioned before, we were in no real rush. So we sat there in my swim, punishing the kettle, full of anticipation, just hoping one of my traps would be sprung and we'd be off the mark. night was gone in a flash and we woke up to a thick fog and motionless rods. No real surprise, as I mentioned before I wasn't overly happy with them spots from the previous evening so it was just going to be a case of enjoying the morning and then getting back out in the boat once the fog had lifted try and find some better areas for the session ahead. As the fog lifted on that first full day at Lac Luna the day started to disappear in a flash and I did manage to find some better areas and Gaz too had got his rods out for the night. It was just a case of holding fast, making sure everything was perfect and Roy had informed us that the majority of the bites had been coming at night. So with that said and another perfect autumnal day coming to a close, with both myself and Gaz happy of our spots, just what would Lac Luna have in store for us on our second night? Ooh, that'll do. October, the month of big carp, and we've certainly got one. Have a look at that, G. I'll tell you what, mate, it's nearly four o'clock. I say we bag it up, quick coffee. Might as well stay up now and get some pickies of him as soon as we've got some light. Well, Black Luna had been kind, and not just one, but two magnificent carp. After receiving my first take just after half four in the morning, Half an hour after that, the other rod was away, and I had myself the most perfect brace of big carp from Lac Luna. Hoisting the first fish up on the scales, we were amazed to see the needle spin round to over 48 pounds, 
and to make the moment even more special, it was a fish that Roy had not recognised since taking over the fishery. Well, how about that for a great big slab of October carp? This is one of two absolute gems this morning. Gaz has even got in on the act. Roy's got his rods out. Zoe's his mate Ryan, so we've got plenty of chances left to show you some of these magnificent carp. But I'm going to get this one back, get a couple of photos, and hopefully there's plenty more to come. Roy said he had some special ones in here, and the first two certainly haven't disappointed. And this is the smallest one of two. Oh, easy girl. But what an incredible creature. Upper 40 in October, very nice. Oh, thank you very much. I should better have a look at the bigger one. As we lifted the scales for the second fish, the needle spun round to over 50 pounds. We'd bagged one of Lac Luna's real big girls and only our second night of the trip. Well, if it lets me hold it up, because it's pretty angry, he's not happy at all, I can tell you. Just check out this Lac Luna monster, like a whale. As wide as it is long, over 50 pounds of absolute monster mirror. Oh, my back's absolutely aching. The first one was big enough. This one weighs an absolute ton. Just check that out. That's why we come here. We've still got time for an even bigger one. As I released my beautiful big mirror, I wasn't the only one that had had action this morning. Just a little bit further around the pond, Gaz too had got in on the act and bagged himself one of Lac Luna's gems. As the needle hovered around 39 pounds, it really did cap off the most perfect morning. We were both off the mark and the pressure was on. Have a look at that. I've been fortunate enough to be able to get the rods out here at Lat Luna on this occasion of Adam's Angling Adventures. I've been rewarded with this lovely 39 pound mirror on the haggis. I didn't want to change the tactics up too much from what I use normally at home. Just changed the bag mix over to a nutty one. And look at this, exceptional. Looking forward to a few more of these, hopefully. Fingers crossed, lovely. The swim I chose was going to give me multiple options during the session. With a huge bay to my left, I had access to tree lines, snags, island margins and even open water. It was actually the open water rod that had done me the bites. The spot itself was a long channel of silt and after prodding around with a prodding stick, I managed to find a slightly firmer area on the outside and this is where I decided to set my trap. Moving across to Gaz, he too had lots of options. Opting to bivy up on a spit, he had access to both a back bay with snags and also the island margin. He also had plenty of open water options if they were needed. Expecting all the action to be at night, I spent the day just preparing rigs and getting ready for the evening ahead. The rigs on this session were really simple. I'd opted to use tiger nuts and was drilling them out and balancing them with cork. I had opted for tiger nuts because of the crayfish in the venue. This would ensure that I was fishing right the way through the night and the crayfish couldn't take off my hook baits. The only thing I was doing different after that was gluing a couple of fake casters to the end of the tiger nut. This would mimic the few I had in the mix and hopefully the cart would search them out. And although I didn't have loads with me, just having a handful of casters in your mix, especially this time of year, can be a deadly tactic. 
The mix was finished off with a good helping of cell crumb. Now I did this deliberately just to help combat the crayfish even further, having all these small food particles in the water would ensure that they wouldn't be able to eat them all and I'd have attraction in the swim right the way through the night. With fresh rigs steamed and ready to go, it was just a case of getting back out in the boat and repeating what we'd done the night before. I managed to locate the spot first time and after lowering the rig down perfectly in position, it was just a case of giving them a couple of scoops of bait and hoping what we'd done the night before would work for us again. Gaz too had opted for tiger nuts for the same reasons, but being a bit of a creature of habit, he was going to use his trusty solid bags. Having served him so well both home and abroad in the past, that was going to be his method for the session. One thing's for sure with solid bags, they really can be a deadly approach when you get into the back end of the year. Now these fish get fed hard throughout a calendar year and often get caught with big beds of bait. But as they start to shy away from these huge beds, a simple little trap like a solid bag or a couple of scoops of bait can certainly be the winning method on these trips abroad. Having access to a boat was going to be a big edge this week. Fishing the island margins in the snags, myself and Gaz were able to get out in the boat with a prodding stick and find the areas that were clear and free of debris. This was going to mean we were fishing safely and more importantly, make sure we get the fish in when we get the bites. With all three rods in position and Gaz happy with his spots, he made his way back to the bank full of anticipation for the night ahead. Well, good evening. And as the sun sets here at Lake Luna, we've just been reflecting on what was a quite remarkable morning's fishing. Those two monster carp really have made the trip already and we've still got a few nights to go. I mean, if we have two or three more like that, we're gonna be absolutely over the moon. But yeah, spots wise, as I say, um, the rigs are what they are, um, but spots wise, I managed to find a couple of nice areas and some snags to my left. Um, if I'm honest, there's too many spots to go on. So it was a case of just picking a couple of clean ones and trying them and I think there might be a bit of trial and error as the week goes on, you know, because there's so many spots to try and they all look good. Um, but the open water spot that's done the bites, that's obviously not going to change. That is probably, I think it's about five and a half foot and it's really, really hard in amongst a big silty sort of, almost like a gully, a little channel. Um, but I've gone on the firmest bit I could find because it's something and often the, the spot within the spot can often be the, uh, the one that does the business. And obviously it did last night, so definitely won't be changing anything. But Go into tonight full of confidence and hopefully see you tomorrow with another Lac Luna Giant. Hit and repeat on the open water rod had worked and we didn't have one but two of Lac Luna's beautiful residents. The bites come in only 15 minutes later than the previous night. The two fish wait patiently for the fog to clear to have their pictures taken on a perfect autumnal morning. Well. How about that? It's double trouble here again at Lac Luna and we've had another couple of absolute crackers. This one being the smallest of the two and a lovely old carp. One we don't think Roy recognises either since he's taken over so it's always nice to see the surprises continue to come out. It's certainly an old carp this one, an absolute beauty. So let's get a couple of pictures of him and then we'll show you one a little bit bigger. monster mirror Jesus look how deep that fish is incredibly wide mega mega fight and it is absolutely pristine 42 pounds of Lac Luna gem we really are getting treated some great action here and I can't see it stopping now I can see it's getting a few more fish so 
who knows what's gonna come along. But I'll take a brace like that every morning, that's for sure. Let's get a few steals and get the rods back out. What another breathtaking morning here at Lac Luna. We really are getting treated some quite magnificent carp. Now, one thing I am gonna to do today, I'm gonna to have the rods in for a little while and rest the swim, and I'm gonna go and sit down and have a chat with Roy. Now, I've known about this journey Roy's been on to fulfill his own dream of having his own carp lake in France, but I thought you might be interested in just how he's made it possible. Now, you may remember we sat down with Chris Manifold in a previous episode and talked about Chris's dream of owning his own fish farm. Well, Roy's story is slightly different, but I think equally as interesting. So I'm looking forward to sitting down and letting you hear a bit more about Roy's journey. But until then, I'm going to go and get myself dried up, get some fresh clothes on, because I stink of Lac Luna monsters. We'll see you in a bit. Right, well, thanks for sitting down with us, Matt. I know how much you really wanted to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're having a great time, mate, and you must be really, really pleased about this place is turning out already it's a fantastic fantastic venue and I just wanted to pick your brains a little bit about like how you've made it possible um, obviously being good friends with you I've known this was coming for a long time and I know you've tried to look at a lot of other venues but you are obviously still quite a young age still in your 30s just about yeah and obviously <laughs> this is something normally people do at the end of their sort of working life is like a retirement thing maybe or a dream at the end and obviously you've given up because this was well, successful business and put all your efforts into creating your own piece of paradise here. Um, what how did it sort of come about? I know you do a load of European fishing, but was this always going to happen, or did it just all of a sudden was you fishing one day and thought, I want to have my own lake in France? Yeah, it's probably, well, the first time I come over to France fishing, I was about 21, and first time I went over, absolutely loved it. And yeah. I was like, it wasn't, wasn't I wanted a lake then, but just loved it, and the more and more I did it, yeah. and sort of grew away from English fishing, into the French sort of fishing and European. And then um, probably about 15 years ago, mm. sort of thought it'd be lovely to have it. And right, then, so um, really young age then. Mm, yeah, but obviously didn't know when, but then probably four years ago, we put our house on the market and me and the missus said, when we sell it, let's just do it, so. Yeah, so you've obviously got a really understanding missus. I remember she's probably gonna watch this, so you better say something nice about her. <laughs> yeah, no, but, yeah. She, she loves it as well. So she's back home at the moment with a little one. Yeah. Um, and then they're hoping to move out here next year once we're more established and everything's all set up. Okay. So will you base yourself here or will you get a like, home in the local village or how are you going to try and work it? Um, we're not sure yet on that one, whether we want to try and get planning to build one on site or just buy one in the local village. Yeah. But it's more about the little one. She's only four, so she shouldn't have just started school. Mm -hmm. So we're giving her one year in her school back in the UK and then hopefully next year they'll okay. move over. Yeah, brilliant. So what about... Like Lac Luna, obviously it wasn't called that before, you've renamed it, but why this venue? Like, How did this venue come about and how was it possible? Were you just looking at every place that was up for sale and this just caught your eye? or? Yeah, we looked at a few. Um, some were for sale, some were not. Some we knew might be coming up for sale. Um, had offers for other lakes as well. Mm. But um, yeah, a friend of mine fished this place and said about how nice it was and the fish that were in here. And it was, it was mainly the fish that caught my eye. Yeah. Because they're not your typical French carp. No, absolutely so, not. Um, that was the main reason, yeah. and it's it's not too far from Calais, so yeah, spot that was on. a big plus. What is it, two and a half hours for people yeah, who wanted to know? Yeah, two twenty. Yeah, and yeah. at the moment, as far as booking goes, obviously it's just getting in touch with yourself through the Lat Luna social media pages and stuff. Or yeah, either through social media or email. You got a li have you got a live calendar or something you were saying about this going to be live going? calendars going up in a couple of weeks um, okay. for for next year's availability. We've not taken any for twenty three yet. Okay, um, and we're probably two thirds full next year already. So fantastic. Yeah, I think this video well. is probably going to help. It's gone rather well so far, hasn't it? It has gone well, yeah. But coming back to the stock, obviously, as I look around here, there is some absolutely incredible carp in here. And obviously, we've been lucky enough to pick a couple of them off this week. And like, like you say, they are almost like English fish in a French lake, aren't they? They're absolutely yeah. superb. But stocking-wise, obviously, there's already a phenomenal amount of big fish in here. But what's your sort of ideas over the next couple of years as far as stock goes? Are you going to introduce some yourself? or? 
Yeah, we're going to introduce some. Um, so current stock at the moment, we was told between 150 and 200. Okay. Um, we're just taking that as word for now. We're sort of we're finding out for ourselves, and we're recording every fish, yeah. pictures of both sides, so we know we're not going to double up on each fish. And yeah. what's in here will be in here. We'll we'll have records of it all. Yeah. Um, and that's going well so far. Every week, this as you found out, yeah. new, new fish coming out that we we don't even know about. So yeah, that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then in two weeks time, we've got the first lot of fish coming. We've ordered, we've got 35 new fish coming this year. Nice. Um, up to 65 pound. Oh wow, so a proper king of the pond going yeah. straight in. Yeah, going straight in. Yeah. And the smallest is 26, so. Wow. You know, all rough weights, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not putting small ones in. No. And um, we're gonna put them 35 in this winter and yeah. see how they get on, and then see what we need to do if we need to do anything. Yeah, brilliant. After that. And then like the venue itself, obviously I know because I've seen all the videos that you sent to me and stuff, it did not look like this when you took it over. So what have you done to it so far and what's the plans for the venue going forward? Um, we've obviously redone the lodge a bit. Um, I've got a new toilet block going in behind me, yeah. um, toilets, showers, etc. We've redone all the swims and just more security. There's a lot of holes in the fence and stuff like that. So it's yeah. all fully fenced, all secure now. Nice. Um, we're going to put a gravel track right the way around um, the lake. Yeah, so people can sort of, what's their, when people turn up, obviously people can leave cars in swims or do they just drive around? And yeah, there'll be, s there'll be certain car parks around the swim, so they're not in view to yeah. the other anglers, but they're close close by for the people. Yeah, obviously being so mature, it's quite nice, isn't it? Because even if you just move your vans back from the swim, That's it's it. yeah, totally just out of view, away. isn't it? Yeah, and we're going to put a couple of stock ponds in as well down the end so that in the future we can grow our own fish on. Start bringing your own Lat Luna specials on. Yeah. Yeah. Add the name, just a quick one on the name, because I, I just didn't know at all, and I asked you, so what is the name? It's something to do with your daughter, isn't it? Yes, my daughter's middle name. All oh, right, yeah, fantastic. So, so it doesn't really mean anything at all, other than it's just your daughter's middle name. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. No, mate, it's absolutely brilliant, and we're having an amazing time here. But as far, just on your own fishing, though, obviously, you, like you said, you majority of your fishing is European fishing, all yeah. over the continent. So going forward, obviously, I know you like to do sort of three, four, sometimes five, six trips a year. Eight. Obviously, eight trips a year. But <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you're incredibly busy right now. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, I know you were saying about potentially taking on a full-time bailiff, but that's sort of in the makings a bit at the moment. Yeah. Um, we can go into that in a minute. But your fishing itself, is it going to be sort of taking a bit of a back burner or are you still going to be pushing forward and doing European adventures? I'm still going to be doing them. I've, I have cancelled probably half of them. Mm. So I've got um, one later this year, and I think I've only got four next year. Okay. But if we do take a bailiff on... No one's going to feel sorry for that. I've only got four next year. There's yeah. everyone watching at home going, I'm lucky to get one in, and he's, <laughs> I'll cut it down to four. But yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um, af after that, hopefully, if we do get a bailiff um, to come in and help, yeah. then it can continue. So at the moment, so obviously I know your plans to get a bailiff in is so that you could potentially offer a full food package and everything so people can come here and just not worry about anything. Yeah. At the moment you're offering all the bait, aren't you? Like particle and yeah, particle, mainline bait, spoilies. Mainline boilies, yeah. Fantastic. So but at the moment, food at the moment, they bring their own food currently? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's full drive, uh, drive and survival at the moment. Yeah. So bring obviously, all your own food. We've been to the local supermarkets not far. Yeah, supermarkets just 40 minutes up the road and then the kitchen there is for just the anglers. So. Brilliant. All yeah, it's a nice little kitchen actually, isn't it? It's yeah. perfect, little yeah. self-contained thing. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. So your own fishing's not, not going to be slowing down anytime soon? It won't be, no. no brilliant. <laughs> well, mate, it's been great and I know you're really, really busy and you've got loads to get on with. So I'm going to go and get my rods back out, let you carry on with your jobs and hopefully okay. we can meet up later and have another look at one of these amazing car. Cool. Okay. Cheers, mate. Cheers.
with the rods back out and in perfect position, we really did go into that next night full of anticipation. With the sun setting on the iconic towers, we were going into that evening expecting rather than hoping. This particular night was crystal clear and had dropped a bit colder, but one thing's for sure, the fish were feeding and the bite came a lot earlier than the previous evening. This particular fish had come to a different rod, the one on the tree line, and after putting up a good account for itself, it was soon in the net and it was clear it was another decent fish. Myself and Gaz were blown away with this one, a near lever in absolutely perfect condition. With the mirror safely returned, I was soon in the bivvy making up fresh rigs, getting ready to drop it back out onto the tree line margin. After making my way back out in the dark and dropping it off, was soon back on the bank, full of anticipation for another bite. However, I was soon reeling them back in and making my way round to Gaz, as he too had got in on the action, and a lot earlier than the night before. Gaz had landed himself a beautiful big frame mirror, again absolutely pristine condition, and number two for the trip. With Gaz's prize safely returned, it was just a case of repositioning the rods and hoping for some more action throughout the night. As dawn broke, there was no more action throughout the night for myself. However, over on Gaz's bank, it was a different story. Gaz had had another bite, and this time, it was something a little bit special. Hoisting it up onto the scales, it was clear it was going to be a PB for Gaz. Knocking the needle round to over 52 pounds, we really were on cloud nine. Gaz's smile was clear to see, and it was a real special moment to enjoy with the boys. As Gaz lifted it out of the sling, it was certainly a known resident to Roy one of the big girls with a distinctive small peck, huge great head. It was actually a fish that Gaz had pointed out on the board that he'd like to catch. Always a special moment. At over 52 pounds, it was the biggest fish of the trip and Gaz's biggest fish he's ever landed. As is custom with a PB, you've got to have the bucket of water. And with the still shots done, Gaz lifting his prize up one more time, we give him a right good soaking. A real special moment, and one Gaz certainly won't forget in a hurry. Well, as is often the case with these trips, they disappear in a flash. And with not a lot of time left now, and after Gaz's amazing PB, we decided to reel in that afternoon and make our way round to the lodge and have a barbecue. We just sat there chilling, having a couple of beers and reflecting on what's been a magical trip. 
I've certainly missed these French getaways, and I'm hoping this will be the first of many in the foreseeable future. Well, we're getting the rods out for the last evening. Feels absolutely electric as it has done all week. Just drop one in position. Just the last one to do. And hopefully we can sign off what's been an incredible filming trip with another one of these magnificent carp. But if we don't, it's been a fantastic trip. And we've all had a brilliant time and hopefully we'll get a little edit together that we can all look back on with some mega memories, PBs and Lovely old carp, some surprises that Roy never knew was in here. We've had it all this week. I certainly can't wait to come back. I'm actually tempted with one of Roy's winter tickets, actually. They do a winter ticket on this particular venue. 300 pound and unlimited fishing through the winter period. So if you can share a crossing with your mate, as I dip down under the tree here, it's a, it's a pretty good deal and there's plenty of carp to go at. Let's get this last rod out. See if we can catch ourselves a last night whacker. Sadly, the lake didn't produce another fish, but it had given us so much already. On reflection, we'd had the most remarkable trip, with Gaz's PB obviously being a highlight. As we sat down on that last morning after packing up the kit, we had a flick through the back of the camera, and some of the prizes we'd caught were absolutely breathtaking. One thing's for certain, there's no better time to be on the bank than the autumn, and Lac Luna is certainly somewhere we're going to return. Until then, we'll see you on the next adventure.